So we'll pre-allocate the arrays using the zeros function. Let me test out the zeros function first. So if I come into the command line and type zeros, and I need um, one row and 11 columns, so I'll say 1, 11. OK, and so I see that I have um, a row vector with 11 values. And I can, if I click the up arrow, I can actually generalize my code to um, the value of n. So I'll say n plus 1, n being the number of time steps. And that should give me the same array. OK, so since that's what we'll use, I'll copy it. So I'll highlight it and copy it using Control-C. And then I'll come into the code and start a new section of the code. And proceed the section with a comment. I'll say pre-allocate arrays. And first I'll pre-allocate the array x. I'll do Control v to copy in the zeros function that I just tested. And similarly, t is also given by the zeros function. So let me run the code now. And uh, before I run the code, I will set a breakpoint here to stop the the execution there. So once I set the breakpoint, I'll run it. And so execution has stopped before that statement. And you can see that there is no x and t arrays here. And if I click on step, it'll execute that statement at which it stopped. And now it's created the x and t arrays. And if I double click on the x array, I can see that it's, um, it's all zeros but now its uh, location in the memory is, is, uh, is going to be fixed. Let me get rid of this, and then I can come into the editor. So click on the editor and say continue here, and that will execute the rest of the code. And now if I go in and take a look at the X array, I'll see that you know the values have changed but these values now reside in the same locations in memory. Which, so the values haven't changed, but the code has been speed, speeded up in the process. Let me get rid of the variable editor here.